Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton, I'm at SMT Nuremberg 2014 and I'm joined by Rick Goldsmith from DEC. Rick, thanks for stopping by. Saw you in China recently and uh, it's been a whirlwind of shows one after the other. In China you were talking about a new, um, a new cleaning roll. Yes. Tell me right. a bit about that. Um, this is our new ultra fine pitch cleaning roll. Um, what we've got is a different type of fabric completely here. Um, mm -hmm. We have a, a magnifying glass. Okay. And actually, what yep. you can see here is we've got pockets okay. within the yep. fabric itself. Yep. What the pockets are doing is, as we pull the debris away from the stencil, the pockets hold the solder paste. Right. So for more densely populated stencils, we can remove more solder paste in a single sweep. Okay. We can also run the cleaner a lot faster than with traditional um, under stencil cleaning fabrics as right. well. Okay. Really looking at the miniaturization market where yep. we've got larger and smaller apertures. And because of the unique design, it actually gets inside of the apertures, especially on the fine pitch right. to pull the solder paste down. Okay, okay. And that kind of just moves it away so it's not putting it onto the next. That's it, yes. Next. We're not taking it out of one and into the yeah. next aperture yeah. itself. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, so increased throughput through running it at a higher speed. Yes. What about the what about the cost of the roll? How does that sit with the with the more traditional fabric rolls? The the cost of the roll um, actually it's priced around about ten percent above our SMT roll, which right. is pretty much a quality industry benchmark. Mm -hmm. However, from a cost of ownership with this particular fabric, one you're using less fabric. Two, you're actually getting a more effective clean. Um, and actually we can do this with two strokes. So for an example, a customer, a mobile phone customer perhaps, that's running a wet vac dry every five boards, mm. we would recommend with this roll that you'd run a vacuum dry every five boards and then a wet vacuum dry every right. 10 boards. Oh, okay. So you'd yeah. cut in half your solvent consumption. Yeah. Um, also you're using less fabric. Yeah and a faster clean as well. Yeah. Okay. And then what's really interesting is with all the beta sites that we've had on this, that instantly just dropping this roll in and keeping the same process parameters, on the SPI, we've seen better quality levels right. without any optimization. Okay. okay, so they've got the choice, they can spend 10% more, get a much better quality environment, yes. but then they can start to tweak the clean cycles and yes. start to actually make savings in terms of and that, that means less that means less time that they're not printing as well? Yes, so better throughput. Um, as I say, we're, we're looking at guaranteeing um, decreasing the cost of ownership right. by using the UFP as well. So better quality, better throughput, and as we want to, driving down the cost of manufacturing. Yeah, yeah which everybody's looking to do. Now you mentioned beta sites. Are those beta sites generally in the consumer sector or are they in a mixture? We've So we've gone to beta sites um, with automotive, we've gone to beta sites in the mobile phone area as well and um, a few consumer others um, so we've done for example yeah. some of the tablet manufacturers oh, okay. as well. Okay, so, so where they do have that heter heterogeneous but lots of miniature, lots of miniaturization on there yes. as well. Okay, and I saw it launched quite um, aggressively in, in China. Is that is that one of the stronger markets for it or is it really a global product? It's, it's a global product. To be perfectly honest with you, we launched it in China because the market was so price sensitive. Mm. It was interesting for us to see the feedback that we'd get from customers. Actually, the feedback was really positive and, and they were, you know, from, from the price of a fabric roll here to something that is on face value, mm. um, maybe even expensive. double yeah. oh, what, okay. what they're paying at the moment. They were looking beyond that and they were more interested in the quality benefits mm. and especially the throughput benefits yeah. that they could get as well. Yeah, throughput's huge, isn't it? But now we're seeing them stronger and stronger in automotive out there. That's going to have an yes. impact as well. Uh, another product that you've been talking about quite a lot in the market is VectorGuard High Tension. Yes. It's kind of been around for a, a few months now. What's the response been? What's going on in the in the, in the sites that have started to use that? Well, VectorGuard High Tension, um, as you know, again, with heterogeneous assemblies and the life of the stencil, we're looking at getting the best possible transfer efficiency that yeah. we can over the life of the stencil. 
So when we brought out the VectorGuard high tension to the market, it really was simple in the fact that mesh mounted stencils after a certain amount of prints do start losing yeah. the tension. And as that, when a board separates, you're getting sort of multi levels of separation yeah. of solder paste. Yeah. So you want to keep everything as flat as possible. With the vector guard, we were looking at sort of doubling the average life of a stencil and getting better process control throughout mm -hmm. that. Now, vector guard already widely accepted within Europe and also the Americas. What we have found is that uh, vector guard standard users that we'd say they've been upgrading their frames to high tension, but also we picked up uh, a reasonable market share on the mesh mounted right. customers as well. What's been particularly interesting is that we've taken this over to China. We've had a few beta site tests in different market sectors in China, and now we have three um, very large stencil manufacturers within China that have signed up for right. us for vector guard high tension. Okay. So that that was that yeah. was very successful, and yeah. we we took a lot of the guys um, that visited Netcon Shanghai yeah. through the demonstration. So we're hoping to make some really good inroads yeah. into that market. Yeah. I mean, for us, it was quite surprising that that particular market, um, you're looking at about 2 million stencils are being used wow. in China per yeah. year, which, which was a real eye-opener for yeah. us. Yeah, it's a big, big market. And within DEC at the moment, we're seeing a lot of the Print Lab stuff and the 2020 vision. The, the uh, Process Support Products Group, your, your group with these things, really are at the front line with the customers, hearing voice of customer really analyzing very specific problems. Is there a good connection between that whole print lab concept and the process support product guys? I'd, I'd like to think that although there's there are two business units, we do work hand in glove. I mean, for an example, you're, you're really buying the, the Rolls Royce, the Ferrari of printing machines, mm. and, and it seems absolutely terrible that you'd put products of a lesser quality in there. Yeah. You really want to make the most out of the printing machine. You really want to get your product out of that with the highest level yeah. of quality altogether. So yes, we do look, we share industry roadmaps yeah. together, um, and we know exactly which way um, both business groups are, grow yeah. are yeah. going. To yeah, work and those future trends are impacting on the on the products that you're developing to support that, that hardware. Yes, absolutely. Indeed. Rick, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for your time. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks very much, Phil. Thank you.